Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And about a week ago, I had someone reach out to me and ask me how to set up a web page similar to what you see on your screen right here. And uh, actually, they wanted to duplicate what you see on your screen right here. And so I shot two videos real quickly showing how in the past I would have normally done it, where you have a top section like this that would have this colored background in it. And then you'd have another section below, and you just push the image up over the top of the upper section. And so like I said, I have two videos I shot on that. I'm gonna show you that after this introduction. But then I started to look at this image more and I said, what is there about this image that is just so perfect? Now we all know the rule of thirds. We all know the golden ratio. But I still looked at it and said, yeah, those things apply, but how do you get this image over the other and lined up in such a way that it, I mean, it just, it just looks perfect. And so that's what the last part of this video is about. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to play the two videos I shot for them the other day to show them the basic way of setting this up. Then I'm going to go through a little bit of teaching on what is the rule of thirds, what is golden ratio, and then I'm going to go through a bunch of examples of images and web pages and the stuff that I built out and show you how it works in web design to be able to line these things up. And at the very end, what we're going to end up with is what I did right here, which is to create a formula essentially to show you exactly how to figure out how wide the background part should be, how big the images should be, and exactly how much spacing there should be on the side here in order to get everything to line up perfectly the way you want it. So first off, we'll go to those videos and then we'll come back for some additional training. Okay, Michelin or Michael Lynn, however you pronounce that. Um, let me show you how to do this here. Now I'm gonna show you one way that does not involve any CSS code at all. This isn't necessarily the way I would always do it, uh, but I could probably show you a dozen different ways to get this exact same effect, depending on what you're going for. My point and my comment was, everybody in that group, the first thing they say is, oh, go to Adobe XD and build it there. And then you basically get a whole bunch of pictures that all look the same. And there's no, I mean, frankly, for me, there's no reason to even use ClickFunnels then. Just go buy something cheap. If all you're going to do is pop an image into it, uh, don't don't use something uh, like ClickFunnels even. Uh, but here's what I did to make this work. So I got just an empty section up here just to give us some white space. And then I have another section here. And I'm going to set this one to wide. Now, again, if I were doing this myself, I'd do a lot of HTML or a lot of CSS code in here, but I'm going to use purely native uh, ClickFunnels functionality. So we got our top padding and our bottom padding. The only reason I put this at 300 is just to give us a bunch of room here because I don't have a row in here. I don't have any elements. So there has to be something here to take up this space. So I just put a bunch of padding top and bottom to do that. And then otherwise, I have nothing here set for now. I will make one change in there. Then I created another section down below this. And I took out all the margin and the padding except the bottom padding. I did that again just to give us some space down here at the bottom before you got into the other junk I have on this page. And then otherwise, I think that is it for this for right now. Yeah, that's it. So then into the row, we will go. And again, you can see how tight it is because I took out all the padding, all the margin, all the everything. And then I dropped in an image in the right hand column. And in that image, I floated that image to the right. Okay, so now we got all the elements in here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to take this image and we want to move it up 300 pixels. So I'm going to put in minus 300. And so it's going to push that entire thing up. So what I did is I came into the section and I basically pushed this one section up over the top of the other section. So you can put this up as far as you want. So let's say we want to go up a little higher. Let's make it even like 500 pixels. And so that's probably closer to looking about, you know, similar to what you got here. 
Um, so we just push it up there like that. And now what we need to do is because if you look at your picture, you got this blue or whatever purplish color all the way off to the left. And then you got this gal here, but we got some white space on the side. So that's what I'm trying to duplicate here. We're going to have white space on the side, but we want this blue pushed all the way over to the left. And you could go maybe a little bit wider. What uh, what did I have here? I have this set as wide. Well, you can't go full page because that takes up the whole thing. You can go wide or again with a bit of CSS, you can set a specific width on this if you wanted to. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into this top section here. We're gonna go to advanced. We're gonna come down to float and we're gonna tell it to float that entire thing to the left. So it floated it to the left and what you're gonna see happen is it pushed this lady down to the bottom, all right? In order to get her to come back up to the top, we need to adjust this section again. But what you're gonna find is you can't find how to get into the section. So you gotta come up here to the top, go to this section here. So you should probably do this in reverse order. Do the second section first and then do the uh, upper section. And we're gonna float this to the left as well. And that's going to pull her right up there into that space. Now, you might say, okay, well, I don't want her quite there. Maybe I want to move back over this way a little bit. Now, again, because once we get in here, we're going to lose our ability to uh, pick up on some of these elements. But luckily, inside of ClickFunnels, we can just come down here, go to Manage. We're going to come down to that image element right here. And so I had her floating to the right. Let's just now float her to the left, get her back in there a little bit more. And again, it's one of these things where you just got to kind of play around with it and get it to line up right. So this whole thing should probably come to the right a little bit more, which means that I'd have to go in here and set a specific width on this background and then just move her over accordingly. But for a real quick, simple, I mean, seriously, take you a couple minutes to set this up. That's how you can get that overlapping all built 100% natively right inside of, of uh, ClickFunnels. Okay, I want to show you one other way to do this that involves one line of CSS code, and I'll explain that to you when we get there. And otherwise, it's actually much simpler than the other way I was showing you. So we can come in here, because it mostly because it doesn't involve those floats. So we came in here to our top section. I removed the background color of the section. I removed all the padding because all of the color and the padding is going to go into the row itself. So we have the settings for the row. I made that blue. I made the top padding, top and bottom padding, the 300. And what I did is I took out the, or I made the width of it only 75%. And then I floated that to the left, whereas here that floats it to the right, this floats it to the left. So you can square that down, float it to the left-hand side. And now normally what you would have is you'd still have some space over here. And I'll show you with the CSS, how we take care of that space. But then down here on the bottom, all we're going to do is we're going to take this section down here. We're going to leave that 200 bottom padding because that was just to give us a little space at the bottom. And now we're going to put in our minus 500 and it's going to pull it up and it's not going to pull it up as far as you would think it should pull it up. But when it renders out, it looks just fine. And uh, so now we pulled that up our 500 pixels. And let me show you what the end result is. This is what it looks like at the end where you got that nicely over the top. And I think actually that turns out really nice the way that looks like that. You could put a little content over here if you wanted to, and that looks really nice. And so the real trick to this is one simple line that basically everybody who's been in ClickFunnels for any period of time knows. And, and again, the problem is, is, let me actually just turn the code off and I'll show you what the problem is, is you always have this, this, this uh this padding over here it would that is native to click funnels and so in order to get rid of that padding all you do is you come in with this one little simple line of css code and you grab a hold of the css id selector from your section so you come in here you grab a hold you click on the gear you come down to the hashtag you grab a hold of that css id selector and then you drop that into your into your custom CSS. How you would get in there is you go to settings, you go to custom CSS. I just made myself a little fancy thing to open it up. And then you go space, and then you type in period, small c, the word container, capital I, the word inner. So container inner, 
and then you put on your little left curly bracket. You put a little curly bracket down there, two lines lower. And then all we're saying here is instead of whatever width they had, which is like 80%, we're saying let's give us a width of 100%. And because we had already told that uh, that row to float all the way to the left and only be 75% wide, that's why we get what you're seeing in the background here is floated to the left and only 75% in width. And so that's how you do it. Like I said, it's one simple line of CSS code and it's an incredibly powerful line of CSS code. So just make sure you keep that. That's how you do it. You put in that and it'll float them all to the, um, to all the way out to the edges of the screen. Okay, so under the rule of thirds, what we're gonna look at first here is this image on the top right-hand corner. And you see it's divided into nine sections, and each one of those lines that you have on there is a third of the width or a third of the height of the image. And when it comes to the rule of thirds, it's more about how you crop the image than anything else. So this was most likely a much larger image, and then they came in here and they looked at it and said, okay, how can we crop this image? So we have the horizon line down here at the bottom is the lines up exactly on that lower horizontal one third. And then here, how can we have the trunk of the tree and the top of the tree all line up on the right hand third line. And of course, you can take this and move the tree over to the left. But in this situation, you obviously would not put the horizon on the top part because that just wouldn't make any sense. So so part of it is doesn't make sense. And part of it is how does it look once you apply the rule of thirds. Now down here at the bottom is a great example of this here. So you have your before picture that they're going to crop and you have this um, this object right here in the middle whatever you want to call it. this is tower let's just call it is right in the middle of the screen and you're going to see as we go forward that what's in the middle of the screen really is not the focal point of the picture at least it shouldn't be the focal point of the picture because people are so used to looking at things in thirds and what we're going to talk about in a minute and which is the golden ratio so when you crop this image what you want to do is you want to make sure that this tower this obelisk whatever it is here we want this on the in this case here we're going to put it on the left hand one third but the other thing you're going to see here is in the background of this image you can see here you have basically a horizon line where you have these two saddles where it dips down and then you have the sky above and again they move the image down so that horizon line right there would line up perfectly with the lower third and therefore you have a very nicely cropped image using the rule of thirds. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is known as the golden ratio. It's also known as a Fibonacci sequence and it even really applies to what are known as fractals. So let's just take a look at what the Fibonacci sequence is first. Fibonacci is some, some guy uh, about 1200 or not, something around that. He created this sequence and what he said is if you take these numbers and he was basically was mimicking nature when he was doing this and that's why it's so effective in design and he said if you take a sequence of numbers and you take the number zero and the number one and you add these two numbers together you get what you get one if you add one and one together what do you get you get two if you add one and two together you get three two and three is five three and five is eight five and eight is thirteen and so the numbers just keep adding on to themselves, and that's what you see down here at the bottom. We have one, one inch here. We have another one inch here. I'm just using inches as, as a thing to look at here. But we have a one by one and another one by one. We add those two together, then we get a two by two. And then two plus one is three, so we get a three by three. Two plus three is five. We get a five by five. And you see as you go around, but you're also going to see that it increases in size as we keep going out and out and out in greater and greater circles. And what they do is they look at the ratio of one to 1.618 and how that really lines up for somebody who's working in this, who's building websites, who's doing anything like that, is you want to look at this right-hand section here. This right-hand section will be, I'm sorry, this left-hand section, the pinkish background, like I said here, is 1.1, 1. 1, 
1.618034. Just remember the first part here, which is the 618. So 618, 61.8% of the width of this object right here should be this left-hand box. That leaves us with 38.2 on the right-hand side. Well, now if we look at it the other way, if we were to flip this on its side, this top part now becomes 61.8 tall, and the bottom part is 32, or 38.2. So 61.8 and 38.2. So let's just, from now on, let's just say 62 and 38 makes it a lot easier. So, so we got 62% at the top. 38% at the bottom. So again, we split up this section here. We get 62% on the right-hand side, 38% on the left-hand side, and it just keeps spiraling down as we go into it. So in nature, where do we see this? And I'm sure you guessed already, the, uh, a snail shell would obviously be a perfect example, but you also have the human face, and you can see here, and it might be kind of small, but they have it rotated around her face, underneath her chin, and around up to her nose. And you can basically take this and turn it just about any way on the human face, and it will line up perfectly. The human ear is another great example. All kinds of different plants, and even like here's like in this picture here, you have the sun coming through in the back, and then you just wrap it around and see the sun becomes your focal point because it's right at that point where you have your, your 60, 62s and your 38s all come together and create this little vortex right here. And you're going to see that more and more and more. So here you have a constellation out in space. Again, another snail. You have uh, flowers. We have an egg down here. Here's actually a storm. So a lot of the storms, a lot of hurricanes, typhoons, whatever, they all form this exact same shape. And because it is the most common shape in nature, and apparently so common that Donald Trump has the hairdo that is in a perfect golden ratio. And in this interest, this is interesting here too. Just look at this picture. So the focal point of the picture is just this little tiny bit right up here where the guy is hanging off the side of the cliff, but it still is perfect golden ratio to come up to that point. Now I'd mentioned for a second fractals, and all fractals are is a just a series that repeats itself. So like the golden ratio keeps repeating itself forever. It doesn't always have to be necessarily the shape of the golden ratio like this one is here. It could be a shape like this that just keeps repeating on and on and on forever. That's what this really is about. And so let's take another look here. So here we got the Mona Lisa and we got the golden ratio over the top of her, come swooping right over the top of her head, right down perfectly onto her nose. Here we have logos, some of the big names, Twitter, Apple, Pepsi. And then we have here something we've all seen before, which is a blog. But again, look at it from the standpoint of golden ratio. On the left-hand side, you got your 62%. On the right-hand side, you got your 38%. And as you bring it back down and around, the National Geographic logo is right at the focal point, the vortex of our golden ratio. And then let's just take a look at a couple of web page examples or image examples. And in this case here, you can see exactly what it is again, comes around and brings our focus, our attention right to that spot. And again, up here, you got your 62% on the right, you got your 38% on the left, but then again, you have your 68 on the bottom, and your, I'm sorry, your 62 on the bottom, and your 38 on the top. And again, so it just keeps repeating and brings us into the vortex. And the exact same thing here, where the focal point is right up here at the top, and again, the vortex ends up right where we want it to be. The most important part is this big triangle here. And we're going to see a whole bunch of that in a minute. That triangle, I'm sorry, not triangle, that's a rectangle. So that rectangle right there is the most important part. Okay, so I grabbed that image off of the rule of thirds. And we take a look at it here. I got my grid lines on it just like they did. The bottom grid line is running right through the black area here. And then what I did is I overlaid this with the 
golden ratio, and I came in from the side here, uh, the 61.8%, and also down from the top 61.8%. And you're going to see the the intersection of the rule of thirds is like right here, and the the uh, center where these two lines come together is always just a little bit to the inner part of it. So it would be one here, one about here, and one about here, and we'll uh, I mean about right here, and we'll look at that some more. But then what you can do is you can overlay the golden ratio image over the top of it. And again, all I did here is I just centered this on the page. I just dropped it on here. I'm using GIMP. I just dropped it on here. It automatically centered itself. And it just comes down and comes right down perfectly around into where the center of the tree is, which is exactly where we want it to be. Now let's take a look at another image here. And this one here, I actually, I was doing a presentation the other day with Andrea Peer, and she had it on one of her slides. And as soon as I looked at it, I says, oh my God, that is perfect when it comes to the golden ratio. And also then once you apply the rule of thirds, it's pretty good there too, because you got the rule of thirds coming down. And in this case here, it's got this white line in the background. I'm not really sure what that is, but the, the, the third, the one third line comes like almost right on top of it, also comes down right through her face down to her arm you got the table here which is the only real surface the only real thing that you have that goes all the way across the page is right here where this horizontal line is for the bottom third and then again our our um our golden ratio that lines up right on top of the computer, which is what you're going to, which is really the focus of this is her computer screen. And then again, if we turn on the image right there, again, we get the exact same thing and you see it. And this is what I saw initially in the picture. I was like, you just look at, look at this line here, this line from the back of her head up to these uh, pictures on the wall and then around like this. You could just see it just like come down around her arm and everything. And I just immediately picked up on that. And so here you do, you come down and you're round and then into the vortex, which is down here. And again, I can move this golden ratio thing around. But for the most part, what I did is I'm just leaving them centered on the page, centered on the image that we're looking at, just to show you that if you have a properly designed image, if you have a properly designed page, you don't have to be moving it around a whole bunch. It should really just cover everything immediately to the point where you can just see it and go, oh, okay, this is a good one. This isn't maybe such a good one. So now let's move into this here because what I want to show you is how this works for a bunch of images. Then we're going to look at some web pages, and then we're going to look at what is basically my final result of what I what I had over here. Let me pull that back onto the screen. What I had here, we're going to apply all of this to these images, and then in the last part of this video, I'm going to go through and show you exactly how to do all of this. So what I did in, in this is I came in and I just said, okay, well, we got our rule of thirds here, and we got our golden golden ratios, which are on these lines right here. And I wanted to kind of highlight it a little bit more so we could see it better. So I just put some red dots on where that intersects for the rule of thirds. And then I colored in blue where our lines are for the golden ratio. And then what I did is I said, okay, well, let's overlay onto this our, our golden ratio image. And so I did that up here at the top. And obviously, you could flip this around to any one of these four quadrants. But most of the time, you're going to have it either up here or up here. Even though with, uh, with the, the first two examples I showed, they were both down here at the bottom. Um, so we, we overlay it there. But then we want to look at this and go, okay, what is the most important part of this, this vortex here in the middle? Well, obviously, the most important part is going to be this little section right there. But it's pretty small, and you never really kind of hit it in that area. But this whole area in here, which will be highlighted in yellow in a minute, that not only does it take the center of the rule of thirds, but it also incorporates the, the vortex part here of the curved line. And then also this part above it right here, because anything that is in this section right here, which is just that last bit of it is the most important part and where you're going to find that most of the action in the image is happening. So I'll color that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the other way. So we got a horizontal 
and now we got a vertical way of displaying this. And again, that section that we're, we're concerned about is going to be right in this area here. So I will turn that green. I'll turn that one off for right now. So again, it's like that last section, that last rectangular area that we want to really hit on. And so there we have the most important parts is the colored in areas. So let me put that, let me put a picture on that for you. And so now you see where her face is and I will cover, uncover everything. So you're going to see here right away that the rule of thirds ends up basically right on her nose, coming right down between her eyebrows and then everything else is right around it. And we'll just start filling things in slowly on here just so you can take a good look at it. We'll do this one first and we'll put in the green and then we'll put in the second one and we'll put in the colors and there you go. It nails it perfectly on what is the focal point for this image because right now this image has one focal point and obviously it's her face and it's right here and it's perfectly positioned on this image perfectly cropped. So now let's take a look at this next woman here and here again we have our one third line intersecting right here right on her eye coming right down her cheek. That's very important. I mean, because where do people look, okay? When people come to a web page, when they come to an image, you know, anywhere it is, where do people look? We look at people's faces. We look especially at their eyes. So whenever somebody comes to look at, you have an image like this, people are going to look at where that eye is, where that face is. And the other thing is they're going to look at where this face is looking, so if you were to use this on something, you have to make sure you have her face pointing inward, pointing towards some text, pointing towards a call to action button. Always have the person, if they're turned sideways, looking towards what you want the person to read on the page. Even though this could be the number one focal point on the page, you want them looking towards, pointing towards, giving some indication of where the call to action is on the page. Now the other thing is like I said, so we got we got our primary focus right here, but then we also have a secondary point of interest or focus right here in the back with the the little beads and baubles and whatever in her hair. And then we have a tertiary action point right here in the middle. But what you're gonna notice is that this part of the screen right here, even though that makes this picture very interesting, this is not the focal point. The focal point is right here. This part right here, and you're going to see going forward, is generally speaking, this is like some of the least important real estate on the page, is the part right here in the middle, because our eye is not naturally drawn to that part of the page. And you'll see that when we start looking at dissecting some, some web pages that I have in a minute here. So again, we can turn everything on real quick here, and you're going to see all of the colors come right over the important parts, right over the focus area right here. And again, middle completely left open, even though that in this image is probably the biggest point of action. So now let's just turn all these off again. And I'm going to speed through this as much as possible because I'm sure you're all pretty smart and you got this figured out. And so I'll just flip on these two and you can see right here, we have the line comes right down her spine, right down her arm the whole way. For the, uh, the horizontal line comes right through the bridge of her nose, through her face. The uh, bottom line here is in a perfect alignment with how she's sitting, her arms, her legs, everything. And again, if we apply everything on top of it, you're going to see exactly what the focal points are. Now, in this case here, this next one, there's really two focal points on this page. First one, of course, is her face. She's looking straight on into us. And of course, this is a boudoir picture. And this was the kind of site I was working on uh, where I got this picture from. So we got our main point of focus up here. But because it's a boudoir picture, we also have the secondary focus down here. Let's not kid ourselves on this. So we got this horizontal line that runs right through the middle of her chest and then right down through her legs. And so this makes this a secondary focal point. 
So if we were to turn on our golden ratio, you're going to see everything right over here over her face, right where it should be. And then you also have these lines even coming through and just bisecting right through the middle of her eyes, ending up on her cheeks on either side. But if we flip this now and we make it so that it's down on the bottom of the page, and this will take me a second to flip both of them. And now we got to flip horizontal. You're going to see that the secondary interest point on this on this image is right down here over her chest, which again is the focus of this image. So let's turn that off and let's take a look at this image here. And in this case here, let me see, I want to flip these again and let me get them back up to the top. Now in this case on this page, what you see here is I actually pulled the image over because it was down here further and the whole focal point was like right over here. And I thought, well, okay, so this, I mean, not every image is cropped perfectly. And so I thought, well, if I just pull it up this way a little bit, we can get it so that these are all in the right place. And again, as we turn on our colors, we're going to see that everything is lined up the way we would want it to be. So on the next one here, I also moved this one around a little bit as well. Let me turn a few of these other things off. Because the dog was, I mean, this is a dog site, just like the last one was a dog site. And a dog training site, I think. And so what I did is I just pulled the image up this way a little bit more. And made the dog more of a focus along our rule of third line right there. And then I also looked at it and said, okay, well, there's kind of an artificial horizon right here where their feet are. All three of their feet really are at this point. So I pulled this up a little bit just to have their feet be right there. And so then let's turn on everything and let's just take a look at it again and see what we got. Now it's not perfect because it's kind of the focal point here is kind of large, whereas a lot of people or a lot of times you'll have it where just a uh, one per a person's eye is like right here in the middle. This is, but it is also balanced as to where it is. If you look here, you have the woman and the man equally balanced on either side of this section right here and the dog completely below it. So I think that that's a great picture lined up like that as well. And then let's look at la one last one here in that this one actually is lined up virtually perfect on its own because you got the dog right here and we know that this is going to be the yellow section right there so we got the dog right there and the man next to the dog right exactly where you would want your vortex to be and including the fact that i just noticed this right now i've been looking at this picture a hundred times is the sun is here as well as part of the most important part of this image now, before we move on, I want to apply everything we've been looking at here to that original image that I was asked to show how it worked. And so here is the original image. And so then let's just apply everything that we know to this. Okay, so first off, let us turn on our golden ratio. And you see right now, we take this top part right here, her head, her face, everything is like centered right in the middle of this top rectangle. Now let's put in the secondary one. Again, same thing here. The uh, intersecting lines right there, right on the corner of her, her hairline right there. And then we can uh, put in our red dots, our blue lines. Let's leave the blue lines and the red dots off. And then we'll look at, just do it this way. Oops, not what I wanted. Okay, we'll do it this way. So now we have the one golden ratio and we have everything that's important here. But what do we have in here? It includes the pizza and everything else. So we turn that off. So we got the pizza, the pizza box, her face. And then we can look at the green ones. And same thing here, comes right around, takes advantage of her face and everything right there. The only thing that we're missing out on is the hand on the pizza. But realistically, her face is really the focal point of this image. Okay, so now I'm going to just go through a bunch more images real quickly here, but we're not going to lay everything over the top of it because you get the idea. You know that right here, right up in here, all the way across into here is the most important parts on these images. So let's take a look at this one here. Where's the problem that we have? They're completely not 
on any of the lines. I mean, not even close to any of the lines here. But uh, so then this one here, again, we know was on the lines. This one was on the lines. This one here, again, not. This one here, not. Now, do I use these in my final result here? Yeah, it's this image right here and this image right here. So they can work just fine if you're incorporating them into a web page or into another image or something else, but just as a standalone image, they frankly weren't really cropped in the way that us as humans want to see an image cropped. Now, in order to show you the next couple of images, what I'm gonna to have to do is every time is pause it a little bit just to be able to change the grid here because we want to be a third width on these narrower images whereas the grid I had set up was for the entire width of what you see here in the background. So again I changed this one out already and you see here now the the uh, the vertical line coming down right here right through the corner of her eye right through the corner of her lip through her chin right where we have our vortex or our yeah our vortex right here and then right straight down her body. Okay, now that I have this one lined up properly, you're going to see here again the vertical line coming down right here, which would basically be the corner of her eyebrow, right through her hairline, and then right through this tattoo she has on her back, actually going through the high point of the tattoo, and the horizontal line running through her eye and right across the bridge of her nose. And we're going to take a look at this picture again, because the last time I looked at it, I didn't really have my my thirds lined up properly. So again, if we look at this here, this uh, vertical line comes right down, th right through the middle of her eye and bisects right here, right on her lips, right there in the middle. And then again, we have our line running right through the middle of her chest. And again, the vertical line coming right down here. And again, like I said, this is a boudoir picture. And so that is probably, well, definitely the secondary focus point on this image. Now, I said earlier in the presentation that really the most important thing that people look at are faces, eyes, especially pretty women's faces, babies, puppies, dogs, things like that, and where people are looking. And so that's why in this case here, when I moved this image up, it brought the dog's head really into the focal point of the page. And the same thing here, we got the dog really here as the focal point, like certainly much more than he had been where he was moved over to the right. And again, here the dog is the perfect focal point. So now let's just take a look at how we can apply some of this to web pages. And there's one of the groups that I'm in, people are always posting the redesigns that they're doing. And I saw a couple of these images the other day and I said, okay, some of them are good, some of them aren't. So I figured I'd just do a little critique on them. And so like this one here, first thing I see here is, okay, so we have an attractive woman standing here. Okay, that gets my attention. But where's she looking? She's looking off the page. And this uh, call to action button here is kind of where it shouldn't be. It should really be, again, at the focal point right there. So let's just take a look at this. I will turn it off. And what I did is I just basically grabbed this image and chopped it up into pieces and moved parts of the pieces around. So it's not going to be perfect, obviously. But this is what I came up with, is I just moved this gal over here to the right-hand side. She's looking into the center of the picture. And now we got our call to action right there. And if we put on the golden ratio, again, it comes perfectly in here. And if we were to colorize it, of course, this entire area right here would be the focal point of the image. And so she's like smack dab right in the middle of where that big blue box would have been if I was including that on these images. So now let's just do this and let's open up a couple more things here and I'll close down a couple. And so now here's another image uh, from that same group. And again, the woman, she's looking the right way on the screen this time, but she's too far off to the right. And again, the button is not on the proper focal point. So all I did is I moved her over, moved the button up a little bit, and I think this looks better than what we had before like this. So I think that's a better place to do everything. So now let's look at one more here. And so here's the original picture, and I just thought, okay, all we need to do is move her over. So I grabbed this part over here that was blank, and I stitched it onto the right-hand side, and I moved her over, and I think that's a much better picture right there. You just have to drop your call-to-action button right there, and away you go. 
So let me see what do I have next here. This one here is actually a good example because my, my horizontal rule of thirds here are obviously off because we have so much blank space here. So if I were to have this here and then I put it in the proper place, it would pretty much come right through the word guide right here. So we got our vertical coming right down and our horizontal will come through about right in here. So this is actually a really good example of focusing your eye right on the title of that book. So let's grab another one. And in this case here, what we talked about earlier is that the center part of the screen is not where you want anything that is going to be your focal point. And again, you got this person standing here without a shirt on. You got a face. You got eyes looking at you. He's looking towards the center of the screen. This has to be one of the focal points on the page. So what I did is I took him moved him back over here further to the left, lined him up right on the vortex point there, and then I took the the text that was over here, that was over here behind him, I just chopped it out, and I moved it over here, and I repositioned the button, and again, I think this layout is much more effective, at least from the standpoint of golden ratio and the rule of thirds. And here, in this image, all I did is I just moved the guy over a little bit and let it be. You'd have to resize resize the text. And then we got one last one here. And so this picture really isn't bad. It uh, is lined up here more or less with the word yoga. That's all good. But I thought, wouldn't it be better if we had the woman on the line and the word yoga behind her? And so that's what I did is I flip-flopped it, moved it over, moved her over, moved yoga behind it. And then you'd have to take your button and move it down here a little bit, which I obviously forgot to do. Okay, so by this point here, I probably have you pretty well convinced that rule of thirds and golden ratio, you want to keep them in mind whenever you're looking at images, taking pictures, cropping anything, or building any kind of a web design. So here are a couple of the pictures that I took off the page that I built. And so we're just going to look at them again, how they line up. Now, originally this picture wasn't necessarily very good because all the action was in the middle, not on the thirds. But when you build your blue box in the back, and you're going to see as we get into this that I show you the actual training on how to build this. We're going to put content in here. We're going to have text. We're going to have, you could have a video in here maybe. That probably wouldn't work out so well. Uh, but mostly it's going to be text and a button or something like that. Um, when you do that and then you look at how we build it and use the formula that I came up with, you're going to find out that everything is going to line up perfectly exactly on our rule of thirds. And let me see here. Do I have my, yeah, I do have that in here too. So it lines up as far as the vortex goes. All right, let's move on to the next image then. So again, here we have the same image we saw before, which again, this was one that did not really meet our requirements as far as golden ratio or the rule of thirds. But again, if it's placed correctly inside of the rest of this section here, then it will line up perfectly exactly where we want it to. And again, let's throw this on top of it and it's perfect there as well. So now let's just take a look at one more. Again, lines up right on her cheekbone, right there in the middle. And then let's do this and then we will flip it around. Um, not uh, vertically, we don't wanna vertically, do we? No. Yes, we do want it vertically. There we go. Yeah, and it come again, perfectly there. If we were to shrink this down, the golden ratio down, it actually would probably just come right around the top of her head, perfectly around the back of her body, and it would be absolutely perfect for this. I mean, and that, and, but this is one of those cases where is this is just a great image. Ever since the very first time I saw this image, I said, that is a great image. So let's go and take a look at one more. Same thing here. Everything lines up. Let's just keep going forward here. So again, we got perfectly lined up there. And here again, right on her cheekbone, right down through the tattoo. Now you're going to notice a little bit off from what we had on the other image, but we were just doing the image itself. Now we have to incorporate the entire web page. And we're still right on there, right on her cheek, right on the corner of her eye. And then what else we got next here? Then we got this lady again here, and we center it right here on the corner of her lips again, which is very nice. And then let's just go for our one last one. 
And again here, the horizontal line, I'm sorry, the vertical line coming right down again, right straight through her body, down her arm, exactly where we would want it to line up. So that is it by now. I'm sure I have you convinced that um, doing a little bit of work here and learning a little bit about this is the best thing to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump forward into uh, getting into the editor and showing exactly how to set up these sections, how to set up the images, and the little bit of a formula that you need in order to figure out exactly how to place everything on the screen.